everyone. <clears throat> it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tio Studio. It is day 31 of October 2021. This is the very last day of the hashtag AJOS Peculiar Persona Challenge, which we did all through the month. Daily art journaling pages with prompts that were uh, to give you a clue about who the character might be so you could character build in different ways in your art journal. So today I have Grigor Mooseman or Mooseman, depending on how you wanted to read it. The E's not in there, although I did put it on my page because I used a moose. But um, it could also be a cow as Mooseman. Uh, it could in, you can always interpret these any way you want to. There's there's no right or wrong. There's no uh, art journaling, character building police that are coming after you. If you don't do it right, that's just nonsense. This is all about you creating in your journal. So I decided that my moose was going to, uh, I mean, you know, who knows? We, build, we make up these stories in our head. And I wanted to try this. I've been wanting to try this for a while. Making plaid on my gel plate. And we've been, at, through this series, I've been talking about different trips that I've taken. And one of the trips I took, um, I don't know, maybe four years ago or three years ago, I went, uh, it was, I remember it was a very hot summer in, uh, in um, the United Kingdom. We went to Scotland and Ireland. And that was kind of a heritage trip. I, I have on my dad's side, Scottish heritage and there's even a clan tartan a plaid you know they were the men wore kilts and the women probably wore like wore the tartan as well maybe as a, a scarf or something or, or a sash so I'm aware of the pattern and I've always found plaid interesting and I thought I would try to create it on my gel plate so that being said, I printed out a picture of the particular tartan, and there's actually a couple different ones. The clan has a new one, and they have this ancient one. The ancient one, I think, is prettier. It's dark. Um, it probably was really dark, but interesting. Green and blue and red, a um, little bit of black, and so I can't, I can't recreate it perfectly. I mean, I could, but it would take me it, it, it's very detailed to get all those little stitches and crossings and everything, but I wanted to make something that looked like it. So I had to think about what comes first on a gel plate. If you're going to make multiple layers, and I should probably make a whole um, video about this type of a process of making layers on your plate and then picking them all up at once in some type of a detailed way like this. Maybe, maybe making tartans or plaids. It's fun. Um, if you think that sounds like an interesting video, you can leave me a comment below and say, yeah, I'd like to see that. I would like to learn more about this process. I haven't actually done this before. So acrylic pens, like Posca pens, uh, Arteza acrylic paint pens, um, Montana pens. Uh, what's the other one? Mo I want to say Mazel Tov, but that's not right. Uh, it starts with an MOS. Anyway, these pins that have acrylic paint in them with kind of a, a softer tip, like made out of felt, they can be used on the plate. You don't stab with them, you know, but you can write on the plate. So I decided that probably the color that needs to go first is the red because that seems to be stitched on the top. So I drew the lines of red in, in um, triples and made that those little, the, you know, the smaller squares out of triple strips of red. Then there was an overall off-weight stitch. Um, so I, that, you know, not probably on the big piece would make a larger square. So I stitched that on, or I drew that line, and I'm using a straight edge to do it. Then um, there was some black, and there was a lot more black than this than I put on there because it was crossing over stitching. And I just wasn't going to do all that. So I just made a couple lines on the outside um, going in one direction of the triplicate red. And then I drew some little cross hatches too. And all those paint pen lines are allowed to dry. 
Then it, I filled in some sections with my brayer with a blue color. And then once the blue color was dry and everything was dry on the plate, I picked up the entire sheet using the green. So to me, the green was the background color. It seemed to be on the picture. And then, um, you know, there was swathes of blue and then the stitching in red and off-white and black. So I think, I think it looks similar. It's obviously not as detailed uh, as the tartan itself is. But I think it, it, it comes across as a plaid. Maybe you don't, maybe it doesn't scream tartan plaid, but um, I think it worked. And I think I should do it some more because it should, it would be fun to mess around with it. And, you know, maybe in the spring when there's um, summer, you know, spring and summer dresses, those type of little plaids with the pinks and oranges, that would be fun to make. So I might, I might do it some more or explore the technique some more so that I can really talk about it when I'm not like trying to get this page done, done, day 31, done. <laughs> I'm very tired of editing. I'm very, my eyes are very tired of it. So um, I want to be over with it. So then I have this cutout mousse that is from the Unsplash. And that's a site that you can get, um, get photographs that are royalty free. You want to keep yourself out of trouble when you're uh, using a picture that someone else took, right? <laughs> and so Unsplash is a good place to go and get those photos. Um, I glued him down. I also had a little cutout hat uh, that I thought was appropriate with a little bit of plaid on the edge. And then I used that printed out piece that I was using to give me an idea of what the, what the tartan looked like um, as a kilt. So I put the kilt on the moose. I put the hat on the moose. And now this is Gregor Mooseman. He's a very proud clan member. And um, it's not the Mooseman clan, but <laughs> it's my dad's last name clan. So yeah, I thought it was cute. Kind of plain, but uh, the technique was interesting of uh, printing the plaid on the gel plate and making a background with it. So now I'm going to have to jazz it up a little bit. It's dark. Um, the moose doesn't stand out very well from the background because he's also dark. In fact, the printed out picture was very dark. It doesn't have a lot of the shading that the picture itself had. Of course, m mooses, meese, <laughs> are dark brown anyway. I mean, they're, you know, they're dark colors, but... Um, I did see a moose once. Uh, we were traveling, we were moving from California to Kansas, and we drove there in our cars and drove across the, the Rocky Mountain National Park. Rock. Anyway, super, super high up, you know, very high mountains. We drove over the state park, and there was a state or, or national park. And there was a moose, and uh, we we stopped. We didn't get out of the car. Don't don't go talk to the moose. The moose can uh, take you out <laughs> easily, so you shouldn't harass them. Um, but we did we did look out the window, and it just stood there, and looked at us like whatever. Um, didn't come towards us or anything. So, but a big animal, big scary animal. So I've got the little, uh, the little kilt on the moose. I went around with white pin and did some highlighting and uh, marks to try to get the moose to stand out from the background a little bit, but I didn't like it. So I ended up uh, switching it up a little bit, but I thought this moose, he's out celebrating his Scottish heritage in the woods because mooses live in the woods. Not really sure that the Scottish Highlands have any woods on them. I did visit the castle in Scotland that was designed by one of my ancestors. Um, it was really cool. It was it was such a cool experience because it's not one of the castles, castle ruins, you know, that are on the tourist map. It's just like out in the middle of nowhere. And we drove out there in a rental car and we got to climb up and 
all around it without a whole bunch of people being there. All the other castles that we visited for the rest of our trip, there was just just tourists everywhere. Um, you know, summertime, it was warm. People were coming in on buses like we were. I mean, not not saying that's a bad thing. We were doing exactly the same thing. But it was nice to be able to go out and, and commune with that particular castle ruin um, without a bunch of people. You felt like you weren't rushed. Also, we weren't on a bus, so we didn't have to hurry and get back on the bus. Because when you're taking a bus tour, they're like, okay, you've got, you got three minutes, go. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's a little bit extreme, but... They probably give you, you know, 15 minutes to go look at something and then you got to get back on the bus. So it was, it that was really fun that day of going out there. And we, we drove past the um, place where they make Walker's shortbread. And we, we drove past a couple different places where they make whiskey, like Glen Livet. Um, these were just little towns, uh, cobblestone streets. Really cool. Very, very enjoyable. So anyway. I put my moose in the woods because, yeah, I wanted to use some of this, these cool gel printed papers. So I just made very, very generic tree shapes. You know, these are, these should be coniferous evergreen trees. They're pointy at the top and, you know, like a triangle. Nothing fancy. Man, I can't stop yawning. Sorry, guys. I hope I'm not making all of you yawn. <laughs> I'm just really tired. I'm tired of art journaling. So the next thing I did was I took a very dark blue Faber-Castell pin, a brush pin, and I went around and made some dark shadows around my moose and my trees. And I blended that with water because with if you have a couple seconds, this is all sealed because I had to glue the paper down with matte medium. So everything is sealed. So you have a few seconds to work with that India ink from that pen and get it blended out into a shadow. So, I mean, a lot of people skip this step. They don't think it's necessary. They don't think it's worth it. I think it is because I think it integrates whatever you've put on the top as collage into the page. It feels like it's there on purpose, like it's grounded and meant to be on the page. If you don't do it, then it just looks like a bunch of stickers you're stuck on. And I'm, I'm just not a fan of that look. So I take the extra time to do the shading and the highlighting. I think it's important. So then I have my white Posca pen and I decided that maybe this was snowy, um, snowy forest because mooses, I think, live up, mooses, meese. I don't know what the plural for moose is. If it was goose, it would be geese. So maybe it's meese, but I don't think it is. Moose, <laughs> mooses, whatever. I think the, this animal lives um, in high elevation where it's cold. Um, Alaska, you know, way up in Colorado, uh, maybe up in Montana or Idaho at the top, you know, where it's it's colder and high elevation. So it's probably snowy at this time. I'm sure it's quite snowy at this time. But here's where I was kind of mellowing out all those white lines that I put on there. Remember, I said I didn't like it. So I'm using the Posca pen as a glaze. So I'm going, I'm taking a lighter brown and going over the white and then blending it out with the white, with the water. And then also going in with some dark brown as well. And even a little bit of black Posca here and there to darken places so that the moose has more dimension. And then I'm adding more snow. I think it, there needs to be more snow. So obviously it's windy. It's been, the wind has been blowing from the left to the right side and it sprayed snow onto these trees and there's snow on the ground around the bottoms of the feet of the moose and there's some splatter because it's still snowing <clears throat> that's what I decided to do because this actually kind of took on a little bit of a Christmassy look because of the plaid um, I was looking the other day for um, I usually buy my friend pajamas at Christmas time, my friend and her daughter, I buy them pajamas at Christmas time. So I was looking at pajamas and I saw plaid pajamas, which always seems like something you should wear on Christmas Eve. So this, this whole 
page kind of took on that vibe too. Of course, it's not snowing here. It's not going to snow here, you know, here in Tucson, but I still remember the idea of it. So, so then I got out some different letters, stick on letters. Um, I have, you know, I got letters, but you run out of the vowels first. So it's never quite right. <laughs> Stickers are never quite right, but I mixed up the stickers using different ones from different packs because maybe I don't have an R of that one, but I've got an R and another one, and it, it looks cooler anyway when you mix them all up and make them kind of crazy. So I put the name Gregor, and I put Mooseman. Actually, when I looked back at the paper, it was Mooseman, but um, maybe it was supposed to be a cow. I don't know. It was so long ago when I made the prompts, I don't even remember. So then my last thing to do was to go around the letters with the white pen to make them stand out from the background, because the background is dark. And then I think that's all I did for this page, page 31, the last page of hashtag AJOS Peculiar Persona. Our challenge is complete, and I did actually make... 31 pages in 31 days and 31 videos in 31 days. So I feel pretty accomplished. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you played along. I'd love to see all your guys' art. And if you are still working on it or you're going to do it later, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Just use the hashtag and you can put it anywhere on social media and it will, it will be searchable using the hashtag because it puts it in categories. And, it, and then it will be with everyone else's. Um, if you did like it, thumbs up, comment, subscribe, share. All those things help my channel grow. And that is it for me for Peculiar Persona. And I will see you tomorrow with my vlog on November 1st. Bye-bye.